Hi there, I'm Daniel from By The Brush Miniatures and today I'll be showing you how you can start a Tau Army. So this video is going to be cut into three stages. Stage one is I'm going to show you how to start off your army with a first uh, patrol detachment of 500 points and then I'm going to take that to a battalion detachment of 1000 points and then we'll take that detachment to a full 2000 points to have a nice strong force for a game. So here is the first 500 point patrol detachment. Now before I get into what is actually in this detachment, I would like to say that uh, for the rest of this video, uh, for the majority of kits in the Tau Army, they'll come with one to about six drones is the most, but that's quite rare. I think it's only the Crisis Suit uh, kit that actually has that. But uh, on average, a kit will have one or two drones, and I'm not going to be including them in the roadmap for this army. So when you have the drones, just make them into whatever you want. Uh, there's no particular one I would be able to recommend for you because they all serve completely different purposes. So I would recommend building into whatever you think would be the most A, fun and B, effective. I personally have uh, quite a few marker drones. But maybe if you want to have a lot of uh, more firepower that has maybe a smaller chance of hitting rather than uh, the marker drones, you could go for the gun drones. Or if you want to build in a more swarmy tanky army, you could go for the shield drones to tag enemies. But what I would personally recommend is go for a roughly even spread of all different types of drones. And... For your first kit, if there is a unique drone to that kit, for example the Guardian drone for the Strike Team, I would recommend building that for your first kit, but it's up to you whether you build it for the next few, if you ever get more. So yeah, that's what I think for drones. So for the patrol detachment, the first thing you're going to want to get is a commander. I would personally recommend starting with the Cold Star commander, mainly because it's a nice safe unit with that 20 inch movement speed that can be boosted up to 50 if you advance. Not 50, sorry, 40. And the commander is the staple HQ for the Tau. And the war gear options you can have for him, I'm not going to recommend anything specific, but I would recommend having at least one support system. As you can see here, I have added a shield generator. And for the Cold Star, I would definitely recommend you utilizing the high up at burst cannon as it's unique to the cold star and any other type of commander cannot actually have it and for the troops option i would recommend a strike team uh this is what i was talking about before with the guardian drone like i say it's up to you whether you actually build it uh there will you will get these in a box of 10 but for recording purposes so that i don't have hundreds of models on my desk i'm going to only have five that'll be a reoccurring theme with all the inventory in this army so if there's a unit of 5 infantry, unless I say otherwise, it's it comes with 10. But the weapons, you don't need to worry about specific weapons, just the longer weapons, the pulse rifles, are longer range, but they shoot less. And the pulse blasters here, they sh are shorter range, but they shoot more. And they hit heavier. So after that, you have the requirements for a patrol detachment. So it doesn't matter which order you get these next two things in. Uh, so one of them is a crisis team. Here, uh, because I bought this kit in 8th edition, you could have two normal crisis suits and then the leader variant. But now you need at least three. So in your first kit, do not build the leader variant. I need to get another box of these to be able to use them. But again, the, the war gear on these does not matter. You can build whatever you want. I would recommend having different war gear on all of them. As you can see here, I have not ever uh, used the same weapon or support system twice on different models. You can go quite wacky with the loadouts. As you can see with this one, he has three flamers, which is something I would... It's, it's up to you whether you have something like that, because it's very fun, but against certain armies it can be quite painful. And the reason you want these is they're the, they're the kind of default battle suit for the Tau. So you definitely want some of these in your army. And they're, they're just nice to have. They're nice. The weapons are very solid. And their ballistic skills all right. And they're decently tanky. So they're quite, they're quite all round. And they're fairly cheap as well for what they are. 
So the next thing I would recommend you get in is a unit that I've personally come to love using in games. It is the Pathfinder Squad. So you have, you can have up to three special weapons in the unit and there's two options. The first option is an ion rifle, which will look something like this. And it's essentially the plasma weapon of the Tau, but it's a bit more deadly as when you supercharge it is heavy, but it does more damage, uh, I believe. Don't quote me on that. And the next uh, special weapon option is the rail rifle. It'll look something like this, and it's essentially a sniper. So it's completely up to you which one of these you uh, build into more. I have three of each because I have two Pathfinder kits. And I would recommend getting at least one of each, and then whichever one you think you'll prefer more, build into that one. Uh, the Pathfinder unit is nice and fast, they move at 7 rather than 6, and before the battle they can actually move before anything's happened, right after deployment. So they're nice at getting objectives whilst your strike team uh, moves onto them to hunker down on them. And on the other objectives, they might even want to hunker down on one if you have more rail rifles, maybe. And also, you'll notice they have uh, the same weapon that, so, that the strike team can have, uh, but you'll notice something different on it. It has mounted on top a marker light, so that, that means that you have a source of marker lights. I believe this is the only one in the game uh, outside of marker drones, which only hit on fives, whereas these have a much better ballistic skill. Because that uh, one dice roll, five to four, uh, greatly increases your chances more than you think. And having uh, so many of these, about seven if you have a full unit of ten, or more if you have a if you have two units, or on a four plus ballistic skill, is very very powerful. And also, if you you don't need to have all of them shoot their marker lights, you could have like say two shoot marker lights to benefit everyone else in the squad. And bear in mind that marker lights also affect other things. So your mediocre ballistic skill of the Tau generally have uh, of 4 plus can be boosted to 3 plus if you get enough marker lights on them. And marker lights work very well with Tau commandos because they hit on 2s. And the first marker light on the target will be a reroll 1, so it's going to be very hard to miss. So. That's why I like Pathfinders. They're just a nice all-round unit for grabbing objectives and also helping with firepower for the rest of the army. So now I'm going to show you how you can take this to the 1000 point battalion detachment right now. So here is everything that will take you to that 1000 points. So first, for a battalion detachment, we need another HQ. That next HQ is going to be the other variant of Commander that comes in the Commander Kit, an Enforcer beautifully painted as you can see so the reason you want an, an enforcer is they're cheaper than cord stars uh, and the more the more of a because they don't have that massive 20 inch movement to that can move to 40 if you advance them they have an 8 inch movement that can that has a normal advance dice roll but they are very good uh, shooters so and again, I would recommend giving this uh, different guns and support systems to your uh, Cold Star. Uh, as you can see here, I've done different guns to my Cold Star. And this is mainly just because it's the best, it's the next best option because you don't really want to have two Cold Stars as your first two HQs. So this is another great thing. And without it, we won't be able to have everything else in this 1000 point because it's cheaper than the Cold Star by quite a bit. So next, you're going to need two more troops. So for one of those troops, I have chosen a Breacher team. This is just the alternate construction of the Strike team. It, they all have the same weapon option, unlike the Strike team, however. And that weapon option is more of a shotgun. It has three different ranges that get better as they get closer. And it's, it's just nice for those melee armies, like, for example, say, Tyranids, Demons, stuff like that, that might be trying to charge your army. These are very good at stopping them because of how close they need to get. And then for the next troops option, you can either go for a, another strike team, or here I've chosen a breacher team. It doesn't matter which one you go for, you can go for either. 
Now, maybe the strike team, if you want to hunker down on objectives more, because you don't really so far have too much with objective secure that can hunker down, because it's better off if your pathfinders keep moving and the breachers can't really stay on an objective too much because their maximum range is only 10 inches. Uh, so right now you only have the one strike team. Or if you want to be running around the game more like looking for closer range engagements, then the breachers are exactly what you want. So pick whichever one you want and go for that one. So now we've reached the needs for a battalion detachment. So I've chosen things outside of that now that we're just going to fit into the free spaces in the detachment. Number one is a box of stealth suits. Now, some people might think that it's an odd choice because they're quite obscure, but I personally love using the stealth suits. Just a side note here. It's the same, it's a similar situation as with the crisis suits here. Make sure that you don't build the leader variant uh, until you've got another kit because I'm pretty sure you can, you can double check this if you want, but I'm almost 100% certain that you cannot build uh, two normals and then a leader variant. You need to have three normal style suits in order to actually field them. But the style suits have a passive minus one hit from ranged attacks. Actually, no, it's close range as well, actually. So that just means that they're kind of indirectly tanky because they, they don't have too many wounds. I think it's only three, but the that minus one a hit against things that like maybe it's against orcs. That means that they're hitting on sixes or, or say something with a really good ballistic skill, for example, a Vindicare assassin that might want to shoot them for some reason or anything with a two plus. That means that they're going to be hitting on a more regular three plus. It's still good, but it's not nearly as good. So these are just great for actually staying on objectives. That's another thing that these are good for. But also these uh, in the, during deployment can go anywhere on the battlefield, nine inches away from your enemy's deployment zone. So essentially you can deploy them anywhere on the battlefield. That means that these can get some really good early points in. Say you've got uh, some secondary objectives that require you to take objectives and say do an action or maybe you have like something like investigate sites for example that means you need to be in a specific spot just anything like that these are great for that just because of how immediate your board presence becomes you have a lot of pressure on the enemy especially if they're playing a more close range army these can keep them away from your more valuable units because these are very cheap as well that's another thing which is why you see so much in this, because a lot of it's very cheap. So next, I'm going to recommend getting two piranhas. These are just, again, to add more board pressure. I recommend getting two because one gets killed very quickly. And also with two, you have the option to build both weapon options. There's a fusion blaster as one of them. It's essentially the Tau's version of a Melo gun. And then a burst cannon, which is a nice infantry killing weapon. So I would recommend getting uh, one having each weapon as I have done here, because they're the only two weapon options. And not only that, because you already have an abundance of drones, these are essentially a transport for drones. And whilst the drones in them, uh, a gun drone specifically, bear in mind, you can make marker drones better with this. It uses the piranha's ballistic skill rather than its own, which is very good because Gun drones only have a 5 plus ballistic skill. So, because as they have the... These weapons are very good. And they have two of them. But the, the only drawback is the hit on fives. But that drawback's taken away if they're embarked in this. Which you can make it so that when this comes into the battle, they're embarked by default. Which gives you free gun drones, essentially. Well, you do have to pay for them, but... And it, it just adds more board pressure. You can either field them in the same unit or you can choose to field them separately. It's up to you. But the point still stands that these are very good for a starting army. So the next thing that I recommend you get finally for this 500 points is a broadside battle suit. Now the reason for this is very simple. It's great fire power because it's not particularly, it, it, it doesn't move very 
fast because there, a lot of the other battlesuits have jetpacks. This doesn't, as you can see on the model here. So this is more... It's, it's very good for supporting your squishier units like a strike team on objectives from further back because a lot of its weapons have very high range, especially the heavy rail rifle, which is actually a sniper. Uh, and it's just very good at, say, you've got a big monster come in like a Tyranid uh, Carnifex, for example, come in for your strike team and they just don't have the firepower to deal with something like that. This definitely does. So that's why you definitely need something like this. Because outside of your commanders, you haven't really had much of an option to actually have much firepower, apart from maybe the odd fusion blaster every now and then. This offers that missing like damage that your army currently doesn't have. And I don't know what I would do without one. So here is the last 1000 points that you're gonna need to take it to that 2000 to be able to really play. So as you can see, we've got a lot of big things here and yeah, that's why this is almost a thousand points. I'll get to why I say almost in a minute. So the first thing is uh, an ethereal. This is something I was debating about actually putting in this video, but the reason I did choose to put it in is because it's a nice supportive unit and it's actually the only supportive unit, I think, in the Tau army and it's definitely the best one. Now, he doesn't have a traditional aura, he has a temporary aura that only lasts for one turn that can be something like a plus one armor save, for example, to uh, Tau units around you. That is very good for a similar situation with the broadside, but if you have a different unit, because the ethereal I have here, which is definitely the one I would recommend, is a one on a hover drone, and he can move around with, say, a squad of pathfinders and not lag behind because he has a movement of eight uh, because of the drone, which is what all drones do, by the way. So he's very useful for buffs, but bear in mind, keep him out of danger because I know this glaive looks good. It's not. He's very bad at fighting, but he's great at buffing units. So he's essentially a buff battery. So next, I have another squad of Pathfinders, if I can get them out amongst the giants. So the reason you want another squad of these is I kind of alluded to this for, uh, earlier in the video when I was talking about the Pathfinders. But the reason you do want these is, as I said, I've got an even split of the special weapons. This lets you do that. So in the first box, maybe you get two of one weapon and one of the other. In this, you get two of that weapon you only got one of and one of the one you had two of. So you have three of each. Uh, that offers a lot of flexibility if you split them into two squads. So the reason you would want two squads of these is because more marker lights, you always go better with more marker lights, and the extra board presence, which surprisingly, Tau, for the amount of stuff I've mentioned in this list with board presence, Tau normally lack in that, uh, just because they normally get out pressured by close quarter armies, but that's what the breaches earlier are for. So these just offer more board presence, more pathfinders, always a good choice. Next, we'll have the biggest thing here, a Riptide. Now you can either go for the burst cannon weapon, as I've done here, uh, or you can go for the ion weapon. If you want to deal with more infantry, uh, you see, if you think that you're lacking infantry killing, which actually this list kind of is, uh, then you could go for this, or if you just want more of that uh, firepower, then you can go with the uh, ion version of this, which, like I said, is a plasma. Because normally ion, not ion, sorry, plasma weapons from Space Marines uh, or anything like that have a much bigger drawback than ion weapons do because ion weapons are only one wound. Some plasma weapons are, but the majority of them are still instant kills. A lot of the non of the ion weapons instantly kill anything. Apart from maybe the squishy you're shooting at, but they will never kill the bearer, which is why there are a lot the Tau uh, variant of the plasma, the ion, is far better, in my opinion, than the actual plasma from other armies. So if you want to go for that, because it's got a, this thing has about 18 wounds, so you're not really taken away from that, but he does already have an ability that makes one aspect of him stronger. I think the three are uh, an invul a better 
I know there's a better invulnerable save and uh, steroid to the weapon, and I believe that the other one is bigger movement, but that's not important. Because it already does one more wound, and it's up to you whether you want the extra risk. Because outside of that, I would say this is outside of the overcharging, I would say this is definitely stronger. And you can equip him with various support systems. This is an advanced targeting system, and this is a target lock. Uh, it's up to you what you do, uh, because these are just specifically ones that I personally like. Uh, and you can. I've chosen for the smart missile systems here. Uh, it's actually been so long that I've built these at this. I can't actually remember what the other option is. I think it's plasma. But the reason I went for smart missile systems is I'd already leaned heavily in infantry killing with the burst weapon. So I thought I might as well lean heavier into that because that's what smart missile systems are for, infantry killing. But also one thing I personally really like about smart missile system and one of the main reasons I chose it on this model is they can shoot things that you can't see, which is just instrumental in... Because the other... There is another weapon in the Tau army that can do that, the air bursting fragmentation projector, but it's quite, quite short range, and it's not very strong. These are very long range and decently powerful, and they get a lot of shots. So that's why I've chosen this specific loadout, but it's completely up to you which one you choose. Now, he's completely in the way where he was before, so let's just move him there. The next thing is a Ghost Keel Battlesuit. Now, this is essentially just the big brother of the Stealth Battlesuits. But also, it comes with two Stealth Drones, which I probably should have got out, but oh well. Which, because it already has, because of this, which comes in it by default, it costs nothing. It already has a passive minus one to hit, uh, to things shooting at it. And if the stealth drones are nearby, which they always would be, that actually makes that minus two. Because in 9th edition, you normally can't stack minus ones, but you actually can stack the stealth drones and the ghost kills passive ability. And for the loadout wise, I've gone with the ion weapon, which I'm not going to lie, if you got the ion weapon for the riptide, I wouldn't go with the ion weapon for this, I would go with the fusion weapon which is incredibly powerful against big like monsters or vehicles. But if you do choose the ion weapon, I would recommend going for the fusion. Actually, no, it has the defusion blasters on by default, never mind. So that is why I chose the ion weapon, because it already has two fusion blasters, which is, in my opinion, more than enough. But it is completely up to, do, to you what loadout you choose. So this is, again, a more indirectly tanky unit. Well, it's also kind of being directly tanky because it's massive. So it'll naturally have a lot of wounds. And it has that minus two hit, which if you think about it, something that's minus one, min not minus one. If something that is a two plus to hit will move, if it's shooting at a ghost kill, will go to a four plus. That's the same as just a normal guardsman or a normal tau. So... That makes the best marksmen in the game very average, and the average shots in the game very, very difficult to land. And a few things you just can't shoot the ghost keel with just because of how hard it is to shoot. It would be like a 7 plus or something if it was a 5 plus. So that's why I've uh, chosen to recommend the ghost keel. So now the very last thing, kind of, is a hammerhead. This is the standard artillery tank for the Tau. You can either build it as this or the transport, but I would definitely recommend for you to not build it as the transport. You've already got enough board presence and pressure on the board in this list. You don't need more by bringing them around in the transport when you can cha change out that transport for either a very beefy ion weapon or a railgun. The railgun is mine of choice uh, because it's either got an infantry killing mode or a monster or vehicle killing mode, both of which are incredibly powerful at their respective things. But if you want a more in the middle, the ion weapon is the only way to do that. This can't really go in the middle. And the ion weapon is again, it's, it's really just similar to all ion weapons. If you want to take that risk, go for the ion weapon. If you don't, go for the railgun. 
I would personally recommend the railgun. This, and I forgot to mention this with the broadside, they can have a Seeker missile. It's completely up to you whether you do want the Seeker missile, because it's more expensive, it adds points, and without any marker lights on the target, it hits on a 6. Uh, but it's essentially a hunter killer for the Tau. It's a very strong one-use weapon. And you do already have a lot of marker lights in the list because of how many pathfinders you have. So it's completely up to you whether you want to choose the, to have a Seeker missile. This is similar to the Piranha in which it has drones underneath. So with these drones, you can either have them be actual gun drones and make it so that they can disembark, or you can do what I've done and go for smart missile systems. And, or you can choose burst cannons it's up to you what you choose because you will have a lot of drones uh, to spare but my explanation for that will come after this. So I would personally recommend either the smart missile systems or the burst cannons just because the drones are weaker than that. Because again you, they use the... They ha it has essentially a very similar rule to the piranha in, in which it use it, the drones embarked use the... Uh, leadership of the hammerhead but again I would personally recommend to trade that for just more firepower and it's completely up to you whether you want the smart missile systems or the burst cannons so now you, you if you have been following along with the points values of this video with a points tracking app like a list builder but you may have realized there's quite a few points to spare with everything I've mentioned here that is because of the drones. Those drones will fill out all the rest of the uh, rest of the points, especially the Pathfinder's drones because they have a lot of unique ones that are very strong. So that's why the it's risky going for the drone option on these because you might just not have the drones to spare in the game to be able to actually disembark them. You might ha not have them almost to spare. You probably will, but if you haven't leaned very heavily into gun drones, you probably won't. So, with in regards to drones, just there's certain special ones that a uh, unit can have. Like the broadside has drones with missile pods that nothing else can use. Uh, the riptide has missile drones, uh, the same ones as the broadside. But they also have shield generators, like the shield drones, so it's a combination of the two. But again, you can only include them in a unit with the Riptide. All drones, you include them with other units, uh, if you can. Mainly battle suits and infantry. Like uh, the Ethereal and any vehicles cannot take them. You have to deploy them with that unit, but after that they are, they're completely treated as separate units. So with that, uh, that takes us to the end of this video. If you like what you see, please recommend, I would recommend subscribing. And if you want to just follow us on Instagram, where you can see some of these models uh, shown in the video uh, up there, and some models from Scott as well, and some not shown in this video, just to see some of our work. And we would appreciate if you supported us on Patreon. We've got plenty of awesome rewards for doing so. But with that being said, I'll see you next time.